Hey guys, in today's tutorial we will be covering some basic Linux commands. These commands should help you to get started with Linux and be able to navigate your way around. I'm going to presume that you're using a GUI interface for Linux. If you are, then what you have to do to open up Terminal is Applications, Accessories and then Terminal, which is right there. So let's jump right in there with the commands and we'll start with the CD command. The cd command is a change directory command. So the current directory that we're in is Ubuntu, as you can see from this. And we want to change to our desktop. So we'll type in desktop. Notice the capital D. The cd command is case sensitive. If I was to put a lower D, it wouldn't find it. So let's change into our directory desktop. As you can see from here, we are now in our desktop. The next command that I will cover is a variation of the cd command, which is a cd and then two dots. And what this does is it takes you back one step through your path. So this will take us from desktop back to Ubuntu. There you go. So let's change our directory back to our desktop. The next command we need to work with is one that's great for beginners and experienced users, which is the man command. Now if you just type man and hit enter, it asks us what manual page do you want. So obviously this command gives us manual pages on other commands. The next command we're going to look at is ls. So what we'll do is we'll pull up the manual page for ls. The name is ls and what it does is it lists directories, directory contents should I say. We get synopsis, description, just hit space to go down, we get a whole load of information to read about it. And to exit this we just hit Q. So the desk within the desktop and if we use the ls command we're going to list what's in there. And we have examples.desktop and ubiquity gt Q dot desktop and that's a weird one to say <laughs> so that's pretty much the ls command for basics that's all we need to know the next command which will help most Linux users and it always always comes in handy for me at least is the pwd command so let's pull up the manual page for pwd and it prints the name of the current or working directory and again, we read a load of information on that, so let's quit it. So let's print the path to our working directory, which is desktop. And there you go. There's our whole path all the way to where we're at. The next command we should look at is making a directory. To do this, we use the mkd. So let's look at the manual page for that. And as you can see, makes directories. We get options, directories, we can again read information on that. So let's make a directory on our inner in desktop, which is our current working directory. Let's call it hacking hq. Now let's try and change directories into hacking hq. And we can, that's good. In hacking hq, we'll make a new directory called web work. And let's list what's in Hacking HQ. And as you can see, we have web work. So that worked successfully. The next command we're going to look at is, and we'll check out the manual page, rm, there, which I'm pretty sure you can guess, removes directories. Again, you can read information on it. Quit. So let's remove the directory out of our current working directory, Hacking HQ. Let's remove the directory, web work. And let's list what's in Hacking HQ. And um, we've got nothing, so we've successfully removed web work. Let's cd dot dot to go back to our desktop. Remember, it takes you one step back. Let's list, and as you can see, we've got Hacking HQ. We're done with that directory, so we may as well remove that directory. And again, the remove and make 
are case sensitive. And let's list what's on our desktop once more. And we're back to how we started. The next command I'm going to show you is just a very, very quick little command and it's clear. So man clear and it just clears the terminal screen. So let's clear and all that junk's gone. That's good. We can now move on to some networking ones and we'll look at the manual page for one called IF con Big. So this is used to configure a network interface or just to view network interfaces and again there's a heap of information for you to read. So we'll quit. So let's type in ifconfig and see what it does. And as you can see it just gives us information like Ethernet, it gives our internal address, our broadcast packets, yeah, it, it's all good stuff to eat. It gets better when you start to do web cracking and things, which I do plan to do a few videos on. This will come in handy. So let's clear the screen. And the last command I'm going to go into, and it's a little bit of a weird one, because a lot of people can just go to applications and then add or remove programs but nevertheless we'll look at this is how to install programs so the first command we use because we use multiple commands for this is sudo okay so let's look at the manual page for sudo sudo is to execute a command as another user now from my understanding of sudo sudo basically you temporarily run as root I believe so we'll type sudo and then we want apt get and we want to install so we're getting an app we're getting an application and we want to install and then you name the name of your application so I'm just gonna go for Firefox for you guys so sudo apt get install Firefox builds the pa uh, reading package list, building dependency tree and it tells me there that my Firefox is already the newest version so it's not graded that's good to go and the very very last command for today's tutorial at least is exit well thank you guys for watching I hope that this helps you out with your journeys through Linux and have a good day